Adderall versus Modafinil and the treatment of ADHD. Now people have been asking me to do this comparison for a long time now and I've hesitated to do it because the comparison is there is no comparison. Adderall or amphetamine has been around for over a hundred years and it's very very well studied it has a long history of showing time and time again to be very effective and well tolerated for that specific purpose at least in the short term. Modafinil on the other hand all of the studies indicate the exact opposite that it is very ineffective in the treatment of ADHD. There have been several clinical trials that have done two in adults one of which I'll show you, the most recent one, where it was shown that modafinil at varying doses going from 200, 300, 400, and 500 milligrams per day versus placebo, none of those strengths per day over a nine week period could beat placebo in the effects of ADHD. The most recent clinical trial took several different strengths of modafinil and compared it to placebo and its ability to lower the symptoms of ADHD. It took modafinil at 255 milligrams a day, 340, 425, and 510 versus placebo. And if you look at the results here versus placebo, you'll see that none of these were able to achieve a statistically significant difference to placebo. In fact, placebo came in second place out of all of them. And yet you'll hear people on the internet, all these jokesters, talking about how they popped 100 milligrams of modafinil and then they turned into Bradley Cooper, which is a total joke and that's what this data shows. It's just totally ridiculous what these people claim. If you look up on clinical pharmacology, the first thing, which is a very respectable site that most pharmacists use, if you go to CVS, if you go to any pharmacist, they're going to use clinical pharmacology. And the first word it says about modafinil and ADHD, it is not recommended. And it proceeds to cite the exact clinical trials that I'm, I just presented to you. Another myth about modafinil is that it has little to no side effects in comparison to Adderall, which is absolutely 100% false. Just looking at the same study, the dropout rate of the study in adults was 46%. So almost half of the people did not even complete the study and the majority of people who dropped out of the study cited side effects and adverse reactions as the reason that they dropped out, 50%. And if you compare it to other drugs like amphetamine, like methylphenidate, the dropout rates of those studies will be about 9%, 10%, somewhere around there. So you compare 10% to almost half and that is an enormous gap of dropouts. And you can even compare it to something that is a second line treatment like Stratera. Stratera, the dropout rates of those trials was about 25%. So 25% to about 40-ish, 50% is a huge, it's a tremendous difference between those two. And the side effect profiles of modafinil and Adderall are very the same. Increased heart rate, insomnia, loss of appetite, nervousness. But a lot of people will actually report more side effects in modafinil, especially if they're trying to take it at doses to achieve something like a reduction in attention deficit disorder. The reason that fewer people cite side effects in narcolepsy, in people who take it for MS fatigue and things like that is because those people already have a lot of problems. So someone who already feels just tired and sick and not well all the time, this, those type of side effects are less noticeable than in someone who is otherwise completely healthy. And also what I would like to reiterate here is that I'm not criticizing the drug or the people who use the drug. Modafinil is a great drug. It helps a huge number of people a lot. It makes people's lives livable again when it's used for its intended purpose. When it's not used for its intended purpose, it's not that great. It's just like this book, right? If someone were to come up and tell me that this book, Paradise Lost, was an instruction manual on how to fly an airplane, obviously I'm going to prove otherwise, but I don't intend to criticize the book. When the book is used for its intended purpose as a literary device, it's excellent, right? So that is my point with these drugs. And when I say, when I talk about modafinil in this sort of context, I don't mean that it is a bad drug or that you shouldn't take it at all. What I mean is that the evidence is not there for what people out there are saying and people are using the drug and not getting the results that they want. And ultimately, that's what I want, is people to get results that they want. And this, what the evidence shows, at least of right now, is that you're not going to get the results that you want, statistically speaking, if you take modafinil for attention deficit disorder. What you simply can't get past is what the studies show is that it is not effective 
or very limitedly effective in only certain subgroups of people, right? But on a grand scale, it simply just does not live up to something like Adderall. It doesn't live up to a first-line treatment like Adderall. It doesn't live up to a second-line treatment like Stratera. It doesn't even live up to a third or fourth-line treatment, which is why it says in the clinical pharmacology site and in other places of repute that it is simply not recommended to take. So I hope you found this helpful. If you have any other questions, let me know. Otherwise, I'll see you next time.